Most of my games might be boxed up and out of reach for now, but there's one entry into the Sonic franchise I was always going to have to resort to emulation for. Knuckles Chaotix. Before you judge me, consider the sheer cost of buying a 32X system and a copy of the game. Not to mention the failure rate of those cartridges and my living in a PAL 50Hz territory where the game runs around 17% slower. This was never going to be one I'd get to play on original hardware. Knuckles Chaotix is similar to Sonic CD in that it's an elusive game I'd heard of but never played growing up. Sure, Games Master had given me the heads up about the 32X itself, and I was exposed to seemingly positive reviews at the time. Granted, one of those reviews appeared in Sonic the Comic while they were running an arc loosely based on the game. But my parents weren't well off enough to buy me an expensive add-on, none of my friends had a 32X or Chaotix, and it didn't get the multiple re-releases Sonic CD later enjoyed. In many ways, it remains a lost Sonic game. Just watch Sega announce a 30th anniversary collection that includes it, and immediately dates this video while also invalidating my entire intro, I swear. Today, I'm finally going to find out what's behind the mystique and allure of Chaotix. Will it be a similar experience to Sonic CD where, once I finally got my hands on it, I found the game to be underwhelming? Or do I have a pleasant surprise in store? Let's address the elephant in the room. This game's core mechanic will be what makes or breaks the experience for most players. You play as two characters who are tethered together by rings. Yeah, Sonic did the whole handcuffed together trope. The two characters' momentum and physics affect each other and you have to work together in order to overcome obstacles. On paper? That's actually not a bad idea. Sonic's core gameplay is all about physics and momentum based speedy platforming. Having to consider two characters sounds like a natural evolution and nice spin on the formula. No, I will not apologise for that glorious pun. Deal with it. To its credit, when this system works, it works well. You can pick up some decent speed, there's some nice to me to you platforming, you can absolutely see what they were going for. The problem is that when it doesn't work, it really doesn't work, and neither the game or player know what's going on or what to do. Controlling Sonic in his solo outings is intuitive. You immediately pick it up. It's obvious how your running speed impacts your jumping distance and ability to tackle inclines. A new player just picks up the controller and goes. Knuckles Chaotix, on the other hand, opens with a goddamn tutorial. Even when you're an hour or so in, you'll be faced with bizarre results where you're not sure what's happening, especially when you get in the air. It can be clunky, frustrating, and it reminds you that you're playing a video game in all of the wrong ways. You don't feel like you have control because your consistent inputs do not always provide the same outputs. Even stranger is that your five playable characters Alright, seven if you include Heavy and Bomb, Nick, don't at me, have unique abilities that let you skip a lot of sections that would otherwise require using the partner mechanics. This option to bypass the, for a lack of better term, mini platforming puzzles has knock-on effects for the rest of the game. If you choose to cheese or otherwise skip sections, then you won't learn the ins and outs of, or become more familiar with, the tether mechanic. The one thing that's supposed to make the game stand out suddenly becomes optional, and because it's tricky to get to grips with, no one would blame you for abusing characters' abilities instead. The game itself certainly doesn't punish you for it, that's for sure. Well, I say unique abilities. Knuckles can still glide and climb walls, but Vector can also climb walls. Espio can ninja run along walls and ceilings, and Mighty has a wall jump that gets more or less the same job done. The only character who really feels any different to control is Charmy, who can outright fly. The B is an I'm bored, let me win now button. During my playthrough, I could only seem to use my primary character's talents. I couldn't find a way of triggering my partner's skills. This means it doesn't matter who you're paired up with, as long as it's not heavy, who's really heavy and restricts your movements, that's literally it, or Bomb, who explodes and hurts you occasionally. 
There are monitors throughout the levels which swap your partner out or make you control the secondary character instead. These monitors were not only temporary, but had zero impact on my gameplay, reinforcing the idea that it doesn't matter which character you select. I only switched my partner out every now and then because I knew I was recording my gameplay for this video and I wanted some variety in my footage. We also have another problem. The level design can't guarantee which characters you're going to have with you. That means the designers don't know which sections you'll be able to outright skip, making their efforts to teach you, play with, and expand upon the tether mechanics borderline futile. They also can't play sections that require a specific character, for example Vector, because the crocodile might not be in your duo. Even if they got around it by placing a vector monitor right before this hypothetical character-specific challenge, the cast abilities are so homogenous that it still becomes a moot effort. While we're on the subject, let's talk about these levels. We have five stages with five acts each. Yeah, you heard me, Sonic Colors. Sonic's first outing was criticized for having three acts per zone. People said the scenery didn't change often enough. Likewise, people groaned when Sonic 2's Metropolis outstayed its welcome with a third act. I mean, let's be fair, Metropolis outstayed its welcome in its first act. Sega knew this would be a problem, so what did they do? They went with the equivalent of painting over the cracks and pretending they aren't there, of course. First of all, you don't complete the levels in a linear sequence. You select, and I use that term loosely, your next level from a glorified slot machine. This makes it less likely you'll spend too much time in any one zone, at least at first. By the end of the game, you might only have three acts of the same zone left, and, uh, have fun with that. Their second attempt at masking the issue comes in the form of a day and night cycle. This changes the level's color palette to try and break up the monotony a little. It's rather transparent and doesn't really work. I really hate stuff like this, where it's painfully obvious the developers were well aware of a problem, but applied a quick fix band-aid instead of taking a step back and properly addressing the issue. Maybe we can blame a lack of time, budget, potential laziness, good old corporate mandate, that's a favourite, or our old buddy sunken cost fallacy, but ultimately they made the wrong decision here. Of course, we also have to consider that their so-called solution creates another problem. Any attempt at balancing the difficulty becomes nigh on impossible because you don't know which challenges the player will face in which order. The game has less of a difficulty curve and more of a roller coaster, which I guess is fitting for the environment Knuckles finds himself in. See, exaggerating all of these issues is the fact that these levels look and feel very similar anyway. The game centers around events on Carnival Island, so all of the levels intentionally look like different areas of the same theme park. As a result, stages quickly start blending together. There are also a few instances where I was genuinely confused as to where to go or what to do. In some cases, I even ended up looping back on myself and going, Wait a minute, I've been here before! The most hilarious example of being thrown off by the level layouts involved me trying to get up a tube to my right, to what I assumed would be the rest of the stage, only to discover the end of the level had been about five feet to my left the entire time. Sometimes this can be blamed on a level's unique gimmicks. For example, Marina Madness has you hitting switches to move boats around in order to progress. The most frustrating stage element belongs to Amazing Arena, hands down. You have to find a clock to turn the lights on, because apparently that's how clocks work now, before leaving the level. In one act, I realized I'd fallen for a beginner's trap and had missed the clock. I couldn't go back for it because a door had locked behind me. I finished the level, curious as to what would happen, it wasn't entirely clear what the clock did besides changing the level's palette, and was horrified to learn my run wouldn't count. I'd have to repeat the entire stage. I mean, talk about BS padding. The game runs a little long in the tooth in general. My playthrough clocked in at just under three hours. I was honestly ready for the game to end after I was maybe an hour in. I had to play the game over a couple of sessions because I was just getting bored and fatigued by it. 
I do have to consider that I was going for the Chaos Rings, this game's equivalent of the Chaos Emeralds, and those special stages last a good while. Access rules are the same as Sonic 1. If you have 50 rings or more when you cross the goal, a giant ring appears that takes you to the special stage. A nice twist is that your countdown timer for the special stage seems to match your ring count, so the more rings you get, the longer you have to complete the challenge. I thought that was a really cool way to incentivize going above and beyond getting 50 rings. The special stages take advantage of the 32X's 3D capabilities, because bugger knows something in this game had to, to render these tunnels where you collect blue orbs. Now, initially rotating my character around these tunnels combined with the short draw distance made navigation confusing and irritating. I was not a fan. However, credit where it's due, the stages eventually open up, involve actual platforming, and become far more involving and interesting. I was actually engaged and, dare I say it, having fun in some of these later special stages. A quick note, this may be a side effect of me having to emulate the game, but I had an instance where the textures for the special stages didn't load, so I could only see the wireframe. Talk about a hard mode variant, damn! Sadly, getting all of the Chaos Rings is pretty much pointless. There are no super forms in this game. The only thing it does is give you the good ending, which, spoilers, is just a different animation under the credits sequence. It's absolutely not worth the effort. Another pacing issue crops up in that you only fight bosses in Act 5 of each zone. Because you're not running through the levels in a linear order, there's a good chance you'll reach a point where you're on, or near, Act 5 of every level at the same time. Essentially, this results in a boss rush, and oh boy, if you thought Sonic bosses had simple patterns and could be easily bullied and abused by the One Ring rule before, prepare to face off against some of the most underwhelming and simple bosses of the entire franchise. Okay, that's not entirely fair. This one boss does make an interesting use of the unique tether mechanic, and that's a really neat idea. Unfortunately, it also doesn't really escalate. There's no desperation attack or anything, it's very rinse-repeat. Metal Sonic's in this game, but even his appearance is kind of underwhelming. He's shown off before the title screen, and he's in the game's opening. He'll even show up and attack if you stay idle in a stage, but his boss fights are an absolute joke. Stage 1 is just a glorified roulette wheel where, if it lands on any of the spaces the levels used to occupy, you get one of several easy-to-avoid attacks. For some reason, they made the Metal Sonic fight a non-contact sport. After winning through the power of gambling, yeah, there's a good lesson for the kids, you move on to Phase 2, where Metal Sonic takes on a dramatic and imposing new appearance, which is badass, but the fight's still a joke. You can stand still and not get hit. Bear in mind, I'm playing this relatively blind, I've not watched speedruns or anything of this game, and yet I was able to quickly learn how to exploit and bully this fight. It's such a waste of an amazing character design. Come to think of it, we haven't really talked about the game's presentation yet. On a technical level, the game's individual elements are graphically impressive, in their use of colour, level of detail, and fluid animations. Unfortunately, the overall picture just doesn't come together. I complained that the levels looked homogenous, they all started to merge together in my head, they lacked distinct identifiers. The character sprites somehow have the opposite problem, they look like they're all from different games. If you line this cast up, Mighty, Espio, and Charmy look like they're from Sonic's 1, 2, or CD. Vector looks like he'd fit in well with Sonic 3's art style. Meanwhile, Knuckles is off on his own over here doing... I don't know what. Complaints about Mighty being an OC Do Not Steal sprite edit of Sonic aside, all of these guys look great in isolation. It's a shame that the partner mechanic means we're always seeing them next to each other and clashing with one another, though. I take particular issue with Knuckles. The Knuckles I know is stout, proud, and physically strong with a frame to match. 
He's a guardian, a defender, he has presence! This is really clear in his Sonic 3 gliding pose. He's rigid, stoic, stable, confident, nothing is going to blow him off course. Compare that to his glide in this game, and it's floppy, whimsical, and featherweight. It fails to convey his character. Thankfully, Sonic Mania provides a new set of 2D sprites that return his trademark characteristics. Although shout out to this cool little flip Knuckles does after climbing a wall, that's a really nice little flourish, why couldn't everything else have been that good? Chaotix does at least have great music, and I was surprised at how many tracks I recognised. Like Sonic 3D, it sounds like a lot of these tracks got remixed and recycled in later games. There are some absolute bops in here, and I say that as someone who 100% cannot dance. The soundtrack's very cohesive, with a consistent tone and instrumentation throughout, but that also means it suffers a similar fate to the level design where, after putting the controller down, I struggle to remember any of the tracks or tell them apart due to a lack of variety and distinction. If I had to summarise my experience with Knuckles Chaotix... It's fine, I guess? It's a relatively inoffensive and largely forgettable 2D Sonic game that fails to leave a lasting impression. There are a lot of ideas here that, on their own, could maybe work. It just all fails to come together. There's this feeling all of these pieces aren't part of the same jigsaw, and that can be seen through both the gameplay and presentation. Its confused mission statement is then bogged down further by attempts to wallpaper over poor design choices and core problems. If you're not willing to learn the tether mechanics, you're going to have a bad time, guaranteed. So come into this one with an open mind. Keep your expectations low, and you might be able to have some fun here. It's categorically not worth buying a 32X for, though. I can see why the game wasn't enough to save that ill-fated add-on. By the same token, it is strange that this hasn't been re-released, and that we live in a world where you have more options for playing Tails Adventure than you do Knuckles Chaotix. Thanks for watching. I had more to say about Knuckles Chaotix than I expected. I also have some good news regarding the channel's supposed hiatus I keep breaking. We now have a locked-in date for getting the keys to the new house, and hopefully I should have at least the bones of my new setup in place by early June. A special thanks to my Patreon supporters Crow and Chuckleson, who have been especially patient with me during all of this. Fingers crossed the next video will be with you all sooner rather than later.